Haleakala National Park has an endangered species problem. According to an analysis by the National Parks Conservation Association, Haleakala has 103 endangered species within its borders, more than any other unit of the national park system. Rounding out the top three were Kalaupapa National Historical Park with 88 endangered species, followed by Hawaii Volcanoes National Park with 53. The mainland park with the highest number of endangered species? That would be Everglades with 44. That means Haleakala has more than twice as many endangered species as a park well known for, well, for being endangered. The reason for this exorbitant number of endangered species is because Haleakala National Park is located on an island. Which, yeah, that's all I've got for you. Hawaii is an island. This has been National Park Diaries. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. No, of course that's not the reason. Well, I mean, it's partially the reason, but it's more substantial than that. Let me throw some more numbers at you. Hawaii makes up less than 1% of the land area of the United States, and yet it is home to more than 30% of its endangered species, including 44% of its endangered plants. There are 10,000 species in Hawaii that exist nowhere else on Earth. 200 plants here have less than 50 individuals remaining, and 100 plant species that we know of have already gone extinct. 75% of the documented extinctions in the history of the United States have occurred in Hawaii. And the reason for this is because, again, Hawaii is an island. But let me actually explain why this is. Hawaii is made up of islands, yes, but these are special islands. The Hawaiian islands are volcanic in origin, but usually we see volcanoes at the boundaries of tectonic plates. Think the Ring of Fire. The Hawaiian islands are not near any tectonic plates. Instead, they have formed over what's called a hotspot. This is basically an area of the Earth's crust that has been partially melted by a really hot area of the mantle below it. That melted rock is lighter than the surrounding rock, so it begins to rise, then it breaks through the surface of the crust, and you've got volcanoes. In the case of Hawaii, as the Pacific Plate has moved to the northwest, different parts of it have moved over the hotspot, which is why the Hawaiian Islands form a chain to the northwest. That's super oversimplified, links in the description if you want to learn more about it. But the effect of this type of island building, for our purposes here, talking about endangered species, is that Hawaii is like super far from any other piece of land, thousands of miles. In fact, the Hawaiian islands are the most isolated island chain on Earth. They've never even been connected to any other piece of land, ever. So when it comes to the types of plants and animals you find on Hawaii, things get pretty interesting because it's just hard to get to. Not a lot of things have ever colonized Hawaii from other areas. I mean, like a random bear isn't just out here swimming thousands of miles in the Pacific Ocean, stumbling on Hawaii and being like, oh, this place is cool. I think I'll stick around. No, the things that have colonized Hawaii were things that could fly, things that could swim, or things that could be carried by things that could fly or things that could swim. Think seeds and pollen and spores, some invertebrates. And even then, again, not a lot of plants and animals did this. It was just too isolated. That meant, though, that the plants and animals that did arrive found islands that were ripe for the picking. For instance, in Haleakala National Park, you can go from sea level to over 10,000 feet in elevation in just a few short miles. Precipitation can also vary widely. The northeastern parts of these islands get a lot of rain, the southwestern parts not so much. And these factors, they can overlap too. Like, you can have habitats that are high elevation, low rain, high elevation, high rain, low elevation, low rain, and low elevation, high rain. Different areas get different amounts of sunlight, temperatures are different, then everything's on a gradient too. Like, not everything is going to be at the extreme. Some rainfall amounts will be in the middle, same with temperature. All these factors then have overlapped to produce islands with an extraordinary diversity of habitats for plants and animals to colonize. In fact, you can experience just as many ecological zones on a trip to Hawaii as you would on a trip from Mexico to Canada. And this, right here, is the reason the Hawaiian islands have such a high rate of endemism. 
endemism being just species that are found nowhere else in the world. The Hawaiian Islands have a high rate of endemism because they are so isolated that very few species ever colonized them. Those species that did found islands with an incredible array of habitat types. And over the course of thousands and thousands of generations, those colonizing species gradually evolved into new species by filling different niches in all those different habitat types. It was an evolutionary laboratory, basically. Free from the constraints of the mainland, the evolutionary forces at play in the Hawaiian Islands produce an extraordinary diversity of species. Think Charles Darwin, Galapagos Islands, everything you know about that, but way bigger. But here's the thing. Here is the part of the video where those endemic species become endangered. Because if you are a species that has evolved to occupy a hyper-specific type of habitat on a teeny island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean where you've never had any natural predators, when those conditions change, you're in for a rough time. And the arrival of humans to Hawaii more than 1,500 years ago was the biggest change Hawaii's native species had ever seen. These species had never evolved any natural defenses because they had never needed them. Things like thorns and poisons. Also, there just weren't a lot of them. Because they occupied specific types of habitats, each species existed with relatively few individuals. Native Hawaiian species were no match for introduced species like cats and mongooses, which eat native birds, rats, which eat native seeds, livestock, which trample and eat native plants, mosquitoes, which bring avian malaria, which kill native birds. We brought plants that are habitat generalists, so they outcompete the native plants, which are habitat specialists. The scale of this invasion has been so drastic that we now see new species arrive in Hawaii every 18 days. Prior to humans arriving in Hawaii, it's estimated that new species colonize the islands every 25 to 50,000 years. Besides introducing native species though, we've also cleared land for urban development and agriculture, and climate change isn't making this any easier. In short, we've fundamentally changed the natural landscape of Hawaii. We've changed a landscape that for thousands of years has played host to some of the most unique plants and animals in the world. That is why 75% of extinctions in the US have taken place in Hawaii, that is why Hawaii is known as the endangered species capital of the world. That is why Haleakala has more endangered species than any other national park. It's essentially a microcosm of Hawaii. You can go from sea level to 10,000 feet. You can find everything from rainforest to volcanic deserts. The problems facing Haleakala are the same problems facing Hawaii as a whole, just on a smaller scale. So, what does this mean for those endangered species in Haleakala and across Hawaii? What is being done and what can be done going forward to protect them? For one thing, we just need to know more about these species. We know there are a lot of endangered species here, but we don't know where they are, what they eat, how they reproduce, how they raise their young. There's a whole host of ecological factors for a whole host of species that we know very little about. That's important because there's not a lot of conservation money to spend on these species. When you're trying to direct a limited amount of money toward protecting an endangered species, if you don't know anything about that species, you're not going to be able to allocate that money effectively. It's going to be wasted. There's an information gap, so we need to learn as much as we can about these species so that the money that is spent is spent effectively. Besides the information gap though, the biggest threats Hawaii's endangered species are facing are other species, those invasives we talked about. They're eating and outcompeting the natives. So conservationists are implementing things like fencing so that predators can't get into sensitive areas. In some cases, they're physically removing the invasives. We can also do this in combination with habitat restoration. Take the invasives out, that's removal. Prevent them from getting back in, that's fencing. And then put the native species back where they belong, that's restoration. We need to address the land use issues as well, stop clearing native habitat for urban development. This is done through things like conservation easements, conservation zoning, and of course, formal protected areas like national and state parks. Then there's, you know, the thing I try and do with pretty much every video I make, raise awareness. 
the more people who know that there's a whole archipelago of endangered species out there who need our help, the more likely they are to be protected. So that's what I hope this video does. I've linked a bunch of resources in the description if you want to learn more. I've also left links to a couple of conservation organizations in Hawaii if you want to help support what they're doing. If you want to help support what I'm doing, I have a Patreon. Links to that in the description. Likes and subscriptions also help a tremendous amount. Also, follow me on Instagram for pretty pictures. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.